everyone, Tamara here. Today I am going to walk you through all of the steps that you need to know to make this puff quilt. This will be a three part series. The first part will be the longest as I will walk you through all of the steps as far as everything that you need to know to make a puff quilt. The second tutorial will show you in more detail how to actually make a ruffle for anything. Um, but this particular ruffle I added onto this puff quilt. And then the third tutorial will show you how to hand tie and baste your puff quilt. I really like how it turned out in the end and I hope that you will stick around so that you too can make your own puff quilt. And as always, I will link everything that I use in the description down below as well as link to those other tutorials when they come out. All right, let's jump into that tutorial. So the first thing you'll need to do is cut out your squares. The top square will be a four and a half inch by four and a half inch square, and your bottom square is going to be a four inch by four inch square. The bottom square is not going to be seen at the end when the blanket is done, so it can be cut out of scraps. I did not have a lot of scraps, so I ended up using white cotton. You will need 64 squares of each size. You will also need enough fabric for the back of your blanket as well as batting, and if you're adding a ruffle, you will need fabric for that as well. All right, so once all of your squares are cut, now it's time to go to the sewing machine so that you can start sewing all of your pockets. You will do one side at a time. You will already start with wrong sides together. So lay your small square down first, and then match your top corner of your larger square on top of that small square. And you will be sewing at a quarter of an inch, just a little bit smaller actually than a quarter of an inch. That way later when you actually do a quarter of an inch, you won't see that first seam. Just start sewing a little bit into your square and then stop, match those bottom corners up. That way you can pinch the fabric in the middle to create the pleat. I tend to pinch and fold down when I do this. Now once you get the hang of how to do that pleat on the one side, then it's easy just to go through and chain stitch all of these squares. That way you're not wasting thread. As you can see, there's not a lot of thread in between my squares here. And honestly, it just goes that much faster. Once you've cut all of these pieces apart, stack them up, then it's time to carry on and do the same thing on two more sides, creating a pocket with one opening. Even though it's the same process, I have a different camera angle here and I think it'll be a little easier to see how to do that pleat from this angle. So just let you see how I start that and then I'll fold it in the center and then I carry on down to the bottom. All right, so now that we have done all three sides, it'll look like a pocket like this one here. So now you're going to want to take all of your pockets, organize them and lay out your quilt the way that you want it to look. Make sure that you pin all of your pieces with the open pocket facing in the same direction, as well as all of the right sides together. Once you've done this, then make sure to number all of your rows. That way you will know what row goes where once you have all of your rows sewn together. And again, my favorite way to sew a whole bunch of these things together in a nice fast formation is by chain stitching. If I was doing a larger puff quilt, I would not be sewing it this way, but because it's a small baby one, it's really easy. The rows are short enough that I can easily just put them all lined up together and zip through my seams this way. All of these seams, however, I am doing at a quarter of an inch, but I'm making sure that the quarter of an inch that I'm doing is just a little bit past that previous seam. That way I won't see an extra seam once the puff quilt is all put together. And at this point, I am also doing a back stitch, starting and stopping between each square. All right, so now that all of the rows have been sewn, it's time to start stuffing our puffs. I did not take a exact measurement on the amount of puff. I just stuffed it enough that it looked like it was a little bit more full, but not so stuffed that it was hard to pinch my last pleat. I did also do a back stitch when I would start each row and finish each row. So once you've stuffed one of these pockets, then it goes the same as what we did all three sides. So you will 
pinch in the middle and create that pleat and then sew over it. The first row, of course, is the easiest because you are not dealing with adding any other rows to it. But once you have to start adding a row to it, you will want to start pinning your rows together before you continue along this process. All right, so I did not mention, but when you are sewing closed all of your puffs, you are going to sew it with just that tiny bit smaller of a quarter inch seam. That way, once you're finished your row, you'll take your second row, you'll make sure that your pockets are open and out, and you are attaching both of the closed ends together. You will pin this together. I did not pin it together for this video because I was too excited but definitely pin it together. That way you can make sure all of your seams line up and then sew your quarter inch seam all the way down. If you do a narrower quarter inch seam, it doesn't have to be an eighth of an inch. That's why I say just, just a narrow quarter of an inch seam. Then when you do this step and you actually sew your quarter inch seam, you will be going just a little bit past your first seam. That way you will not see it in the end product. So just sew these two edges together. These are both the closed edges. And I tend to nest those little seams together, these ones here. I'll nest those edges together and then I'll sew right over them. And once you've attached those two closed edges together, then you can continue on down your blanket, adding into your open puff pockets, and then add the next row on and continue down the line that way. And when your puff portion to the puff quilt is done. It should look something like this. And now it's time to start binding the entire quilt together. Now the math says that you will cut your batting and your back piece of fabric at 28 and a half inches by 28 and a half inches. However, because you have sewn so many seams, the math could be a little bit off. So what I would suggest doing is pulling your top puff quilt piece of fabric that you've sewn taut and measure those edges and let that be the measurements that you use to cut your fabric and your batting. If you are adding a ruffle, this is the time that you would add it. So take your bottom piece of fabric, lay it face up, so right side up, and then lay your ruffle all the way around the outer edge. Now I had quite a thick section, probably a one inch section all the way around that you can see in this photo with all of my uh, stitches holding the ruffle together. All of those stitches I actually laid past the bottom piece of fabric. That way, when I sewed all the way around and attached the ruffle to the fabric itself, that one inch section of bulk, I was able to then go around and trim away, put together, and then pulled right side out. So take your batting and lay it down first. Then take your bottom piece of fabric that the ruffle is attached to and lay it wrong side facing down, right side facing up. And then take your puff portion of the quilt that you've already sewn all together and lay that face down, so the right side down. And then pin all the way around the outer edge, marking a gap that you will leave open before you sew everything together. That way, once everything is sewn all the way around the outer edge, you have a space that you can pull the entire thing right side out.
And then once you have sewn around the entire outer edge, you can turn it right side out through the hole that you left behind. Straighten it out, make sure you tug at those corners, and then just pin that last opening and sew along the top of it. And once that final opening has been sewn shut, the only thing left to do will be to hand tie your quilt together. That will be a separate tutorial, so I hope you'll check back for that one. And I would like to highly encourage you to try this even if you don't like the ruffle because I do think this blanket looks great without the ruffle as well. And that, my friends, is how you make a puff quilt. If you like this tutorial, please click that thumbs up button, subscribe if you want more creative content, and as always, click that notification bell so you don't miss another video. And please don't forget, I have this as a three-part series, so check back and come find that tutorial on how to make that ruffle, as well as how to make those hand ties. All right, I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye!